Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, my name is Dakat Zaman. And we are going through understanding the tafaqqu, the deep understanding of fiqh. And if you guys enjoy these types of videos, let me know, inshallah, and hit the like button as well. Share my videos with others. So we're going through the idea of khas at the moment. Right? So in this lesson, I want to talk about the idea of continuation with khas. And I want to talk a bit about this issue of the elbows as well. Right? So this is like a common issue which the Hanafis discuss whenever they start their fiqh discussions. So the idea of wiping, remember last time we talked about the idea of khas and we said khas was a word which was a specific word to a specific meaning. Meaning that if someone out there was to hear that specific word, like if I said to you the word London, or if I said to you the word Islamabad, or if I said to you the word Medina or Mecca, your mind would go towards one thing. Right, so this is like a specific word, and this word, if someone comes along and says, "Well, I am going to provide you with a new interpretation of what London means, or a new interpretation of what the word the Earth means, and so forth," uh, this person really is going to be dismissed, right? Because that meaning that they have come with is not really a meaning which supports the language. The language would say, "Well, if it's a khas word, it's khas." So we talked about the word ghasl, irsilu. And we talked about the word wujuhakum, your faces, right? So the face. So the word wamsahu actually means to wipe, right? And like I said, it means to touch. So the Hanafis say, well, if it means to touch, then that means how much of the head has to be touched in order for the wiping to actually happen. This is where now Hanafis, some of the Hanafis take this issue and they say, well, if it's a wipe and you normally wipe with your hand, then you'd expect that wipe to simply mean you wipe wherever your hand can touch. So whichever part of your head, like if I touch here or if I touch here, whichever part of my head I touch with my hand, masa has been done. So they said, well, in the Hanafi fiqh, we have this concept of a quarter. A quarter is like, you know, instead of the whole thing, as long as you've done a quarter of it, then it's considered to be done. Now, this rule does not apply in every matter. It applies in those matters which there is ambiguity, you can almost say. So there's ambiguity in about the head. So they say you wipe a quarter of the head, right? And the issue with regards to a person getting out of the state of ihram, you say, they say as long as the man shaves a quarter of his head or cuts a quarter of the hair on his head, then that person is out of the state of ihram. So they have this idea of the ruba. It's called the ruba, right? the quarter concept. So they say your hand is the wiping tool. As long as you have wiped, you've literally done what the Qur'an said, وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُسِكُمْ So a quarter of the head would suffice. So you have this idea of quarter that some of the Hanafis have come out with, where they're using the idea of the wiping and a quarter. Some of the Hanafis, however, here, they say, well, why can't we look at it in this way, that you're supposed to wipe with the hand, and the hand is made up of fingers, so that's something which is measurable. So we'll say, well, Let's look at as long as most of your hand has touched your head, right? So never mind your hand touching your head. As long as most of your hand, and because we measure it with the fingers, we say as long as three fingers of the head, of the hand, right? touch your head anywhere, three fingers, you, know, you touch your head with the size of three fingers anywhere around your head, then the wiping is going to be considered to, to, to have been completed. So that's where the two original opinions about this idea actually come about, where we discuss this issue of the wiping of the head. Is it supposed to be done with a full hand, as long as your full hand touches your head? Or is it as long as the area of three fingers on your head, anywhere around your head, you were to touch and you've covered the area of three fingers, then that would suffice. So these are two opinions that have been reported from the classical Hanafis. So I want you to understand what the tafakkuh behind this is, where some of them will use the quarter concept and some of them will say, well, let's use the majority concept. This is known as the lil akthar hukmul kul, right? The majority takes the place of the ruling of the entire, right? So the entire has been swapped with the, with the majority, as long as you've done the majority of it. Now, obviously, this rule is not a rule which is applied everywhere in fiqh. It's only applied in those situations where this kind of muscle appears. So for example, like you have the wiping over the leather socks. So the issue of the wiping majority, as long as majority of the foot has been wiped, the leather sock has been wiped, the majority of the hand, sorry, the majority of the hand has been used, so the three fingers again, 
Right, so as long as you've wiped, imagine this is your foot, and as long as the size of three fingers have passed over your hand, that would suffice. So if you did one hand, one finger, Hanafis say, well, that would not be allowed because then we are wiping, but we're not really wiping. Does that make sense? As in we are wiping, but then we're not really kind of getting the meaning of wiping there because that would be with the hand. And then either you do it with the full hand or you do it with the majority of the hand, right? So this is where the Akthar ruling has been used. So that's, that's the view. Now, some later Hanafis that came, what they tried to do is they, they said, well, why can't we look at this ayah of the Qur'an? W wipe your, your heads. Wamsahu bi ru'usikum. Right, so you got, you got three words there. Wamsahu, wipe, so touch. Bi, there's bi normally in the Arabic language comes for the meaning of um, with, right, with, and then head. So touch, wipe with your head. Like, how does that work? Do you like rub your head against something? That doesn't make sense, does it? Now, I have explained about the various types of uses of ba in the Arabic language, right? You can check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, over there, I've explained about these. So, because we have a variety of usages of ba, right? So, the, the, the ba itself is a khas word. It comes from ilsaq originally. In other words, something is attached to something else. But over here, we're not sure which one has been applied. Now, this is what we call, in usul, we call this concept mujmal. Right, so some uh, scholars have taken the root of mujmal. Mujmal basically means this. Imagine, for example, like I gave you my phone and my phone has the password on there and you tried to figure out what the password was. You kept trying, trying, trying. You probably would never be able to figure it out. And the reason for that is because the password is only known by me and the only way you can find out what that is is by asking me. So there are certain words in the language, the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where there is a particular word that has been used, but we're not really sure exactly what is intended by it, right? We might know the linguistic meaning of it, but what is intended by it, we might not know. And there's not that many of them. Like, I'll give you an example. Like the word, aqimus salat, established salat. So if you are living on an island and you received a copy of the Quran and you read this and it said, establish prayer, and you're thinking, prayer? What is prayer? What exactly is prayer? Because the... the the, the, the dictionary meaning of prayer is actually to make dua. So if someone argues, well, Allah is just saying make dua. We say no, because we know there used to be a prayer at that time. We know there used to be a physical prayer where they used to bow down and prostrate on the ground. So this requires now the lawgiver right, to explain. Just like with the mobile phone, if I explain to you what the, if I tell you what the password is, you'll be able to open it, the phone. So likewise, if the lawgiver tells us what salat means, and that is through the Prophet Sallallahu teachings, this is now, has now clarified that word which is obscure. Make sense? Mujmal can be clarified by using a narration from the Prophet Sallallahu So some of the scholars have said, well, if we look at the narrations, what's the bare minimum that has ever been recorded that the Prophet Sallallahu he wiped? So they say, well, the bare minimum that he wiped was a quarter. There's a hadith of Mughira bin Shu'bah where the Prophet Sallallahu he actually is doing the wudu and then he's wearing his turban on his head and he wipes the front part, this front, this front part, right? Which is the size of the nasia. Nasia is the forelock, right? Forelock. And they've said, well, the Hanafis have already mentioned a quarter and we've got this nasia, the forelock. So he wiped over the forelock and then he wiped over the remainder of the imam, right? So imagine I've got, I've got like a turban on, so he wipes over the front of it and then the rest of it, he wipes over the remainder part of it. So they said, well, can't we say that maybe the Hanafi's position with regards to, maybe the Hanafi's position with regards to the quarter is actually based on the, on, on, on the nasia, right, the forelock. So some of the scholars have actually equated the quarter with the nasia, right? So they've taken that route. So they've come out with a third opinion in the madhab, which is that you can either wipe over a quarter of the head or with three fingers or with a nasia. But they've said that the nasia is actually equal to the quarter, so therefore in reality there's only two opinions according to them. Make sense? So this is why some Hanafis, as time goes by, some Hanafis might have been trying to use hadith to try and support what Imam Abu Hanifa and his students had said. Make sense? Now, this is why if you read Quduri, he will say that the wiping of the head is obligatory of a quarter, a, a nasia, miqdar al-nasia, wa huwa rub ras, which is a quarter of the head, right? 
And other Hanafis may disagree with this and say, well, a quarter is actually a large area. If I put my hand on my head, you can see a quarter takes up a large area. And the nasia is literally just this part over here. If I were to grab the forelock of my head, that's the, that's the nasia over there. Right? So you've got the nasia and then you've got the forelock. So this is why the Hanafis on this issue actually do differ. Now, I did want to go into the, go into the, the ila, the elbows issue, but unfortunately, I think time doesn't permit it. Let me know if the duration of these videos is nice for you guys. You guys enjoy this. So just to summarize, so then we talked about this idea of wiping and we said that the wiping is to do with touching and then we're trying to figure out how much is the bare minimum for a person to wipe according to the Quran for that wiping to be done. Now we know that the sunnah of the Prophet is to wipe the entire head, of course, without a doubt. That's the sunnah. But we're saying what is the bare minimum in order for that to be attained, right? So this is why we said there's two opinions from the early Hanafis a quarter of the head based upon the concept of a quarter and the other concept being applied here is the concept of the majority as long as the majority has been done it's like all of it has been done and then some later Hanafis came along like Imam Tahawi, Imam Quduri and they've equated the Nasir Hadith and they've used that as an explanation for the Mujman for the obscure verse of the Quran the Ba Humsahu Bi we don't know what this B is and now by elaborating on this, we say, ah, wam sahubiru usikum has been elaborated that as long as with some of your head, the size of the nasia has been done. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I really don't want to make these videos too complicated. So if you are finding it complicated, please let me know. I'll try to water it down as much as possible. Um, and what kind of discussions would you like to hear as well? Leave in the comments as well. If you have any questions, maybe I can, I can uh, address those issues as well. So thank you very much, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I hope you guys have a wonderful time. And by the way, oh, would you like more videos of these? Or would you like them once a week? Is once a week sufficient? Or would you say maybe a couple of times a week uh, would be better? Please let me know because I don't want to overburden you with this. The idea of all these videos is to really get you guys into understanding the mechanics of fiqh, the, the inner workings of fiqh. Right? And as long as I've achieved that and you, you go away thinking about these things, then alhamdulillah, I feel as though I have... I have done what I have set out to do, inshallah. All right, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.